命が命久しぶりだな「SASUKE」Hi everyone, I'm Kevin. These are my bodyguards, Matt and Sal. They come with me wherever I go. At school, at the movie theater, on vacation, at concerts, they are always there. Who do you think they are protecting me from? The answer is myself. You heard that right. My bodyguards are protecting me from myself. What does that even mean? Let me give you an example. Four years ago, my school organized a field trip to the circus. This was my first time going to the circus. It was so much better than I had expected. There were acrobats doing incredible things in the air, fire eaters, wild animal tamers that shared a cage with their animals. I was watching the show completely mesmerized because these were brave people like me. Then a man came on to do a bow and arrow act. He was really talented, just like the others. First, he hit a series of balloons tied to a rope. Then, his assistant threw three balloons up in the air. He pierced those with his arrows as well. The hardest trick in this act was the last one. The assistant covered the man's eyes with a blindfold. She stood in front of him and put an apple on top of her own head. Everyone was holding their breaths. Just as the man was about to shoot, the woman said, No, I can't do it. It's too dangerous. Throwing the apple on the floor and running away, the man was shocked. He turned to the audience. Well, this has never happened before. Would anyone like to volunteer? Otherwise, I can't perform my act, he said. As soon as I heard this, I stood up and jumped into the ring before anyone could stop me. I picked up the apple from the floor. I put it on my head. The man was still in a blindfold. The apple is on my head. Let's see if you can hit it, I said. When the man said, Aren't you scared? I can't see anything right now. I could shoot you instead of the apple. I said, No, I'm not. In fact, I don't know what fear is. Then the guy took aim while still in a blindfold. He fired his shot. The arrow flew towards me, cut the apple on my head in two, and went deep into the wooden panel behind me. At that moment, the man's assistant came back to the ring screaming. The shooter took off the blindfold, saw me, and screamed, Who are you? It was only after the fact that we figured out what was really going on. It turned out that the assistants yelling, I can't do it, and running away was also a part of the act. They would always plant another circus performer in the audience. When she ran away, that person would go up on stage pretending to be a volunteer. Until that day, they never had a regular person volunteer for this. When I ran into the ring, the circus staff thought I was part of the team. Of course, I wasn't. When they figured out I was a real member of the audience, they were really surprised with my bravery. I'm sure you are also curious as to why I did it. The answer is that I have a very rare genetic disorder. I can't feel fear. My parents were very concerned when they learned about what I did at the circus. My mom said, Kevin, I know it wasn't your fault, but it can't go on like this. We have to take precautions. We've decided to hire bodyguards for you. They will go everywhere with you and prevent you from hurting yourself. This is how my bodyguards, Matt and Sal, came into my life. My dad is a well known lawyer. His job pays very well. That's how my parents could afford the bodyguards. But I didn't like it at all. You might think having bodyguards is kind of cool, but going everywhere with them, being constantly under their scrutiny, and most importantly, Getting all kinds of weird looks from people is definitely not something you should envy. At the same time, I understand my family. Because of my condition, there's a good chance that I would hurt myself. According to some doctors, it's a miracle that I even made it to this age. As you know, our brain manages all of our emotions. Thanks to our brain, we feel happy, surprised, angry, sad, and, of course, scared, too. There's a part of our brain called the amygdala. This part is responsible for fear. It also controls worry and stress, which are closely related to fear. And therein lies my problem. My condition prevents the amygdala from functioning properly. In other words, my brain doesn't know what fear is. And since my brain doesn't know what it is, I can't feel it. For example, if a barking dog runs towards me, I don't get scared. Because I'm not scared, it doesn't occur to me that I should run. I'm sure you can guess what might happen in that situation if I don't run. 
I can hang out in the middle of the night in a dangerous neighborhood without feeling any kind of uneasiness. Let's imagine that while I'm in that neighborhood, someone attacks a woman. The woman screams for help. In such a situation, I would run to help her without thinking twice. Because I'm never afraid, I don't worry about something bad happening to me. I don't feel stressed out when I'm about to take an important exam. You might think this is a good thing, but it's not. Because I'm not stressed, I can't prepare properly for the exam. Why? Because I'm not scared of getting a bad grade and therefore don't feel like I should study hard. This is why I've always been an average student. Doctors figured out I had this condition when I was seven years old. My family used to think I was just a very brave kid. For example, when my mom said, we're going to the dentist tomorrow, I would say, yay. My mom liked that I wasn't scared of going to the dentists. One evening, my mom came to my room to call me for dinner. When she saw me, she screamed at the top of her lungs because I was lying in my bed embracing a giant python. I was surprised that my mom was screaming. When my mom said, Honey, don't be scared. Just get up slowly and come to me. I asked her if I could bring along my friend. The python was the friend I meant. Apparently, one of our neighbors had kept the python as an exotic pet. It somehow escaped and came into my room through my window. I was so happy to see it. It was my first time touching a snake. I played with it for a long time. When I got tired, I laid down holding my new friend. When my mom walked in, she was obviously scared out of her mind to see me hugging a giant snake. After this incident, they thought it was a little weird for me to be this fearless and they consulted a doctor. After running some tests, the doctors were able to diagnose me. No fear disease is a very rare genetic condition. There are only 400 recorded cases in the world. The pharmaceutical companies don't even bother to do research on possible treatments for this condition. Last year, a professor came to visit us. We are conducting research at the university if we study this disorder, perhaps we can also develop a cure for it. But in order to be able to do that, we need your help. We need to run extensive tests on Kevin, he said. I gladly said yes, and I'm so happy that I did. The tests were super fun. For one of the tests, we spent a night at a famous haunted house. They knew I wasn't afraid of physical things, but could I be scared by supernatural stuff? They conducted a test to find out. The research team put a special helmet on my head. It recorded my brain activity. If I got scared, there would be movement in my brain's amygdala, which would be picked up by the helmet. One of the doctors on the team told us about the haunted house before we went there. Every night at midnight, the owners of the house come out and walk around until morning. But there is a problem. They've been dead for over a hundred years. They are walking around as ghosts. My bodyguards were really scared when they heard this. They asked the doctors a ton of questions like, is this for real? Who's seen these ghosts? Will they hurt us? When the clock hit midnight, both the bodyguards and the research team were really tense. They were looking around all the time. They were waiting for a ghost to appear at any moment. I, on the other hand, was watching them with amusement. After a while, I got sleepy and dozed off on the couch. When I woke up in the morning, I had a good laugh seeing Mad and Sal holding each other. They had obviously been very scared. The doctors examined the data from my helmet. Apparently, there had been no fear-related activity in my brain. In fact, the highest activity was seen in the part related to pleasure. The doctors concluded that I wasn't scared of the supernatural either. For another test, we went into a tunnel of terror. That's the place where you have things jumping out at you unexpectedly. The research team wanted to see how my brain would respond when confronted with the unexpected. They had me wear the helmet again. I got into the front car. My bodyguards and the doctors were behind me. We entered the dark tunnel. At one point, a huge skeleton popped up in front of us. I didn't respond at all. Everyone behind me screamed. In a little while, we had gigantic tarantulas and rats fall on us. Again, the bodyguards and the doctors screamed. I guess they weren't <laughs> expecting anything to fall on us from above. This is how we moved through the Tunnel of Terror. There were vampires and ghosts popping up along the way. To be honest, after a while, I was bored. I even checked my phone. When we were done, the doctors checked the data. Again, they did not see any fear-related activity. Now they knew I wasn't scared of the unexpected either. They did many more tests like this. They collected a lot of new data about the disorder. But they said it might take years for a drug to be developed because it is a brain-related issue. 
I told you about all the downsides of my disorder. Are there any benefits to it? Of course there are. For example, I feel very comfortable when I go somewhere and there are a million people that I don't know. Because I don't worry about what other people think of me. I can speak really comfortably in front of an audience. I never get nervous. My teachers at school always come to me for such speeches. I hear that some people have a hard time sleeping at night because they are stressed out about the things they've been through during the day. Thanks to my condition, I don't have this problem. I don't know what stress feels like. I only know that it doesn't feel good because I've heard it from others. I'm never unhappy. I'm always in a good mood. And that's one of the good things about my disorder, I guess. Another advantage is that I have no phobias and I will never have one. I'm never scared of the dark, of spiders, of thunder, of heights or planes. I can sleep like a baby when flying. Once I was on a plane that had to do an emergency landing, I was so calm that the other passengers were upset with me. Thank you for listening to my story. Please subscribe to get notifications when new videos drop. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Bye.